This video shows how to calculate the determinant of a matrix. Determinants are only defined for square matrices, matrices with the same number of rows and columns. People don't usually talk about the determinant of a one by one matrix. People don't usually talk about one by one matrices at all. But if for some reason you needed to compute the determinant of a one by one matrix, a matrix with only one entry, then that determinant would just be the entry itself. So now let's get to the simplest real situation where you'd want a determinant, the determinant of a two by two matrix. That determinant is given by this crisscross product, A times D minus B times C. There are a few notations for determinant. Sometimes you might just see the letters D, E, T of your matrix. So that means the determinant of the matrix or you might see DET of A, if A is the name of your matrix. Another notation you might see is just straight lines, kind of like big absolute value lines surrounding the entries of your matrix. So all three of these are notations for the determinant of a matrix A with entries A, B, C, D. So now let's work an example. We're gonna find the determinant of the matrix with entries three, negative two, four, five. So that means 3 times 5 minus 4 times negative 2, which is 15 minus negative 8, or 23. Once we go up in size from a 2 by 2 matrix to a 3 by 3 matrix, things get a little more complicated. We can compute the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix by expanding along the first row and computing an alternating sum of entries times determinants of two by two matrices. By an alternating sum, I mean you we alternate adding, subtracting, adding, subtracting, and so on. Let me explain more precisely what I mean. Expanding along the first row means we start with the first entry of the first row, so A, and then we take the determinant of the matrix we get by crossing off the row and column that A is in. So that's the determinant E, F, J, K. Next, we take the next entry in that row, B, and we multiply B by the determinant of the two by two matrix we get by crossing off the row and column that B is in but we're doing an alternating sum, so we're gonna subtract this one, B times the determinant of D, F, I, K. Continuing along the first row, we take the next entry, C, and we're gonna add C times the determinant of the matrix we get by crossing off the row and column that C is in. So that's plus C times the determinant of D, E, I, J. If you like, we can write all that out as a formula, A times E, K minus J, F minus B times D, K minus I, F plus C times D, J minus I, E. But I think it's easier just to remember the process rather than some complicated formula. So let's use this process on this example determinant. We're gonna expand along this top row. So we'll start with the number two and multiply it by the matrix we get by crossing off the first row and first column. Two times determinant of negative four, two, one, negative one. Then we'll subtract five times the determinant of one, two, two, negative one. And now we'll add three times the determinant of one, negative four, two, one. That works out to two times this product minus this product. So two times four minus two, minus five times negative one minus four, plus three times one minus negative eight. And that all works out to an answer of 56. Now I have a question for you. What's so special about expanding along the first row? I invite you to try expanding around the first column instead. Do the same sort of process. Take one number at a time, cross out the row and column it's in, and do an alternating sum that way. When I do that, I get two times the determinant of negative four, two, one, negative one, minus one 
times the determinant of 5, 3, 1, negative 1, plus 2 times the determinant of 5, 3, negative 4, 2. And that works out to 56. Try using a few more rows or columns. If you use the second row, you have to be careful to use a negative sign in front of the first entry, a plus sign instead of the second, and a negative in front of the third. So it's still an alternating sum, but it's going negative here, positive here, and negative here. Same thing if you expand down the second column. You have to have a negative in front of the five, a positive in front of the four, and a negative in front of this entry one. But if you use the third row or the third column, you're starting with a plus again and still doing an alternating sum. So it's kind of like the matrix itself has a checkerboard of pluses and minuses. And when you add up these entries times these two by two determinants, you just gotta make sure you add them with the alternating sum that, that starts with the right negative or positive sign. I won't prove it here, but it's kind of cool that you get the same answer no matter what row or column you expand along, as long as you start with the right positive or negative sign. And this can also be handy for computation. If there happens to be a row or a column that has a lot of zeros in it, you might want to expand along that one to save yourself some arithmetic. Let me revisit what we just did with a little bit of definitions and notation. So for a three by three matrix A, the determinant of the two by two matrix that you get by crossing out the ith row and the jth column is called the ij minor and it's denoted a i j. So for example, if we wanted to find the a i one one minor, that would be the determinant of the matrix we get by crossing off the first row and the first column. So that would be four minus two, which is two. And a one two is the determinant of the two by two matrix we get by crossing off the first row and the second column. So that would be the determinant of one, two, two, negative one, which works out to negative five. Similarly, a one three works out to nine. And when we calculated the determinant of matrix A, we took the alternating sum of entries times minors. So we took A one one, the entry in the one one position, times A one one, that minor, minus a little a one two, the entry in the first row second column, times the minor a one two, and then we added little a one three times the determinant of that two by two matrix a one three. We also saw we could calculate the determinant by expanding along different rows or columns, for example, along the third column would be A13, capital A13, minus A23, capital A23, plus A33, capital A33. Now that we have this terminology and notation, let's extend this to find the determinants of matrices of higher dimension. So in general, if A is an n by n matrix, the ij minor of A is the determinant of the n minus one by n minus one matrix we get by crossing out row i and column j of A. The notation for the ij minor of matrix A is just A i, j, as before. And the determinant of A is given by what we get by expanding along the first row of A and taking an alternating sum of entries times minors. So in symbols, that would be little a, one, one, times minor big A11 minus little A12 
times minor big A one two plus little a one three big A one three minus and so on until we finally get to A one N big A one N and that will be either a plus or minus depending on whether N is even or odd. As with the three by three matrices, it turns out that you can actually expand not just along the first row, but along any row or column, as long as you start with the plus or minus sign that corresponds to this checkerboard pattern of plus or minuses with a plus in the upper left corner. So please stop the video and use this algorithm to calculate the determinant of this four by four matrix. Beware, it's gonna involve a lot of arithmetic. So I'm going to expand along the first row. That means I'm going to start with the 1 times the determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix. And I'm going to subtract the 2 times the determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix plus 0 times this two by two, 3 by 3 matrix. Zeros make me happy here. We're not going to have to worry about this because it's just 0. And finally, I can subtract 3 times the determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix. Now I'm going to compute my 3 by 3 determinants each separately, and I'll just expand each one along its first row. So I get minus 8 for the first one, minus 14 for the next one, and minus 4 for the last one. So this all adds up to 1 times negative 8, minus 2 times negative 14, minus 3 times negative 4, and the final answer for the determinant of this 4 by 4 matrix is 32. And if you chose to calculate this determinant by expanding instead along a different row or column at any stage of the way, you should still get the same answer. This video showed how to calculate the determinant of a matrix by expanding along a row or column and then using determinants of lower dimension matrices.